In the early 1960s, the world of aviation was rapidly evolving, the jet age was in full swing, and the commercial aviation industry was growing at an unprecedented pace. But there was a gap in the market, a void that needed to be filled. Business executives and high-flying entrepreneurs were craving for a mode of transportation that combined speed, reliability, and luxury. They needed an aircraft that could take them from New York to Los Angeles or Paris to London in record time without the hassle of commercial flights. Perfectly on time, the Learjet 23 enters the scene. This sleek twin-engine jet is about to revolutionize private aviation. Unlike anything before it, the 23rd is not just an aircraft, it is a statement. It symbolizes success, power, and cutting-edge technology. This is no ordinary plane. This is a machine designed to solve a problem. How to travel quickly, comfortably, and on your own terms. The story of the Learjet is intrinsically linked to the man who envisioned it, William Powell Lear, known to the world as Bill Lear. An innovator, a maverick, and a visionary, Lear was a man driven by an insatiable curiosity and a relentless pursuit of perfection. Much like we all think of Steve Jobs when talking about Apple products, Bill Lear is the same type of person in the realm of business jets. He was a self-taught engineer with a knack for inventing, and by the mid-20th century, he had already received dozens of patents, most of them being in the radio engineering field. By the way, thanks to his genius we now have radios in our cars, and surprising, the power brick, is one of his inventions too. However, Lear's ambitions were not confined to the ground. He had his eyes set on the skies. When in 1931, Lear bought his first plane, he shifted his inventor focus to the avionics. Lear founded Lear Developments, a company specializing in aerospace instruments and electronics. Lear was responsible for the development of radio direction finders, autopilots, and the first fully automatic aircraft landing system. In recognition of this contribution, he was awarded the Collier Trophy in 1949. Fast forward to 1960, Lear relocated to Switzerland and established the Swiss American Aviation Company. The objective of the company was to transform the FFA P-16 jet fighter into a business jet. However, due to several fatal crashes during testing, the project was discontinued and Lear sold the company to the Siegler Corporation. However, Lear kept one thing for himself, all the blueprints of the SAAC-23 execu-jet which was the name of the jet they were building in Switzerland. Interestingly, the name of the plane indicated its target audience, executives and top-tier businessmen. So in February 1962, Lear and the newly established Lear Jet Corporation moved to Wichita, Kansas to begin the development from scratch. Just two years into the development, which went surprisingly smoothly, the legendary Lear Jet 23 was approved for production, which began on October 13, 1964. Now let's dive into the numbers that truly define the Learjet 23 and set it apart from its contemporaries. This aircraft is not just about its sleek design and luxurious interior. It's about raw performance and efficiency that were groundbreaking for its time. The Learjet 23 is powered by two General Electric CJ610 turbojet engines, each generating around 2,800 pounds of thrust. Of course, you don't compare jets to turboprops, but just to put this into perspective, these engines are almost twice as powerful as those found on light aircraft of the time, such as the Piper PA-31 Navajo. The speed of the Learjet 23 is another standout feature. This plane had an impressive speed of 561 miles per hour. That being said, it couldn't outrun the commercial jets of the time, like the Boeing 707, which had a top speed of around 600 miles per hour. But hey, the 707 is a big commercial jet that cannot offer the same luxury and comfort as the 23rd. In fact, the Learjet's cruising speed is still comparable to many of today's modern business jets. The aircraft has a maximum range of approximately 1,800 miles. This means it could fly non-stop from New York to Miami or from London to Athens, making it an ideal choice for cross-country or trans-European business trips. While the Learjet 23's range was impressive for the time, it was not enough for transatlantic flights. This limited the aircraft's usefulness for international business travelers who needed to cross oceans frequently. But where the Learjet outperformed everyone, altitude. It was capable of reaching an altitude of 45,000 feet, which is higher than most commercial jets fly. 
This capability allows it to fly above the weather, providing a smoother ride for the passengers, but more importantly, this altitude is also very fuel efficient. In terms of capacity, the 23rd can accommodate up to eight passengers, along with a crew of two. While the Learjet was designed for comfort, its cabin was relatively small. The room for movement was limited, and the aircraft lacked amenities like a lavatory, which could make longer flights less comfortable. While being the first of its kind, the start of the production felt slow. However, as soon as people understood all the advantages, this jet became an item of luxury and status, and orders skyrocketed. With 101 Learjet 23 built in just two years, from 1964 to 1966, this iconic aircraft received a major upgrade, becoming the Learjet 24. While diving into the details of every Learjet would make this video incredibly long, let's briefly go over each of them to see how Learjet evolved throughout the years. So, in 1966, Learjet 24 took to the skies with a lot of upgrades on board. First, being a gross weight, increased by a whole thousand pounds. This was partially achieved by installing new engines, General Electric CJ-6106 turbojets, 2,950 pounds of thrust each. Other updates included new windshield, auxiliary fuel in wingtip tanks, and a fire extinguishing system for the engines. Production ended in 1977. Learjet 25, that was also built in 1966, and was technically just a stretched out version of 24th, being 4.2 feet longer to accommodate three extra passengers. Also, they finally added a lavatory. Its production ended in 1982. In 1973, Learjet announced Model 35 and 36. Till this day, this Learjet is the most sold one. Equipped with two Garrett TFE 731, two 2B turbofans, 3,500 pounds of thrust each, this jet had an impressive range of 2,800 miles. Model 36 had even more, which had shortened passenger area in exchange for more space for aft fuselage fuel tanks. 36 also holds a few records. For example, in 1976, American professional golfer Arnold Palmer used a Learjet 36 to establish a new round-the-world class record of 22,894 miles, completed in 57 hours, 25 minutes, and 42 seconds. Because of its speed and long range, leaders of many nations bought the aircraft as their primary jet. Countries that did this include Brazil, Chile, Finland, Switzerland, Saudi Arabia, and others. Also, it's worth mentioning that a lot of 35 and 36 were used by the military of many nations around the world. In 1977, the Model 28 and 29 were presented. The Model 29 was essentially a long-range model, similar to the Model 36. The plane itself was based on the Learjet 25 and received a completely new wing fitted with winglets, resulting in improved performance and fuel economy. The new wing design, initially intended for the Learjet 55, was originally planned to be used for testing purposes on the Learjet 28. However, due to the exceptional climb performance and the ability to operate at an altitude of 51,000 feet, by the way, it was the first business jet to reach such heights, the decision was made to offer the Learjet 28 and 29 as production aircraft. But according to Learjet, the 28 and 29 models were considered commercially unsuccessful as they had a reduced range compared to the newly introduced Learjet 31. The addition of winglets necessitated the removal of the earlier model's wingtip tanks. These models mainly appealed to customers who prioritized good altitude performance. Only five production Learjet, 28 and four Learjet 29, were constructed before production ceased in August, 1982. Yet, it's worth mentioning that the first production 29 was used by Neil Armstrong to set five aerospace records. In 1981, Learjet showed the Model 55, which received a significant fuselage size increase, allowing for more comfort, had wings from Model 28, and got two Garrett TFE-731 from Model 35. Production ended in 1990. In 1987, the company presented one of their most advanced models of that time, Model 31. Essentially combining the fuselage and engines of the Model 35 with the wing of the 28, resulted in superior performance. 
This Learjet also received a lot of engineering upgrades, such as full digital avionics suite by Honeywell. 31 was in production till 2003. In 1991, Learjet showed Model 60, being a stretched out Model 55, but equipped with Pratt & Whitney Canada PW305A turbofan engines, 4,600 pounds of thrust each. This plane found wide adoption in military fleets of many countries around the world. In 1995, Learjet, acquired by Bombardier, opted for a complete redesign of their famous airplane. The Learjet 45 was developed to compete with the Cessna Citation XLS in the super light business jet market. The design was completely new, and it was the right choice because the original design from 1963 started to feel a bit outdated, despite all the upgrades. In terms of size, the Model 45 fits between the 31 and 60, yet the use of a new fuselage structure made it significantly lighter than previous models. In terms of engines, the choice was made in favor of the trusted TFE-731. However, this clean sheet Learjet faced a lot of issues in its early days. Even in the early 2000s, Model 45 users reported having mixed sentiments about the jet, while they admired its impressive balance of speed, payload, and cost effectiveness, they were often plagued by regular maintenance troubles. These issues, combined with delays in receiving the necessary product support and components, were significant drawbacks. However, 10 years later, a 2017 used aircraft report by Business and Amp Commercial Aviation magazine indicated that owners now regard the aircraft as a gas-and-go airplane and credit it with great reliability. And the article's author, BCA senior editor Fred George, describes it as a rock-solid, reliable workhorse. In 2002, a shortened version of 45 was introduced, Learjet 40. There wasn't a lot of upgrades to this plane, just a shorter fuselage. Latest, and sadly the last, Bombardier Learjet 70 entered production in 2013. It is essentially an upgrade to the modern-day Model 45. With better avionics, interior, and of course new engines, this time the TFE-731, but with the 40BR modification equipped with thrust reversers. The Learjet 70 is a timeless classic of a light business jet, just the way you, me, and millions around the world imagined it to be. Sadly, the Learjet 70 was discontinued in 2022. It's amazing to witness how engineering, design, and technology advanced through these decades. But let me end this video with a few words about the plane that got it all started. Learjet 23. Its arrival onto the scene in the early 60s was more than just a product launch. It was a pivotal moment that marked the birth of the business jet sector. From its conception to its last flight, the Learjet 23 was a hero in its own right. A hero that flew in the face of convention and emerged as the benchmark for private aviation. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. We truly hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future videos. Fly safe, and until the next one.